everybody. Um, this is going to be my very first Let's Play, and I'm doing Investigative Journalism, a Welcome to Nightville fan game, which is fan made by Astrid Dalmody. Okay, um, so considering this is my first Let's Play, I apologize if I screw up with any um, words or whatnots, and yeah. So I'm going to put my name in. My name is Nicole. Hello, and let's begin. The light color links let you explore. The dark purple links mark your decision. The invisible links lead to the secret government websites of which you should pretend to know nothing. Welcome to Night Vale. Okay, that was me trying to do the intro. Clearly, um, clearly that was not it. So, let's just move on. It is your first day as an intern at the Night Vale Community Radio Station. You know it may be your last, but the show can't proceed as normal until you've recaptured the news. It used to be kept in the newsroom, behind a propped up mop, under a bristling pile of headlines, and locked inside a steel box. But the mop has been knocked over, the headlines are scattered, and the box still has acid burns dripping down its side. There are no other clues as its whereabouts. It seems that if the show is to go on, it's time for some investigative journalism. I really, I really think I need to have like sunglasses as I say that and be like, Chill! but I won't. So clues as to the disappearance of the news could be scattered anywhere throughout the station. It'd be best to look closely for anything you can find, but not too closely. Of course, you can search for clues in the recording booth, the break room, the station Oracle, the newsroom, or ask station management, or you can leave the station and search for clues elsewhere. I am going to pick the break room first because the break room the break room is a magical place. So click. The break room is where all present, past, future, and non-future employees of well of, of, of Nightville Community Radio Station come to relax and have a night before they get caught by station management. Sounds like my managers. <laughs> There is a slight burn of acid in the air near the fridge and the microwave, but you can't tell if it's just the scent of a normal refrigerator or a sign that the news scattered its way through the break room. You can either take a closer look or keep looking around the station. I don't know. When I go to the break room, I always search the fridge, so I'm going to click the fridge. The break room fridge is white with a dingy yellow handle. Someone at one point tried to spell out a warning in magnets across its front, but they obviously ran out of letters. Beware, it reads. You're not sure if you can take it seriously like that. I mean, eh, I can still read it. I, I don't know, though. I don't know if I should, I should actually beware or not. Back. Um, let's check out the microwave. Let's see the last time someone cleaned it. Well, the microwave clock blinks at me. It's 12 o'clock. Uh, you don't know why you expect it to change. It doesn't. It never will. Time, after all, doesn't even work in Night Vale. Maybe no one has yet to set the clock yet. Hmm. Either one. Does that mean, like, I'm in a time loop where it's, like, always 12 o'clock, and I'm like, I'm never getting out of work? Because that seems like hell. I don't want to be... I don't want to be in this world if that happens. Because, you know, I'm going to be, like always at work, I'm never going to see my family again, it's going to be a very lonesome life. Anyways, I'm going to go back and I'm going to keep looking around the station. Uh, let's do the recording booth. Um, I stand outside, you stand outside my recording booth, I rave, you wave back, I blink twice, shake my head and swallow the secrets that were trying to slither their way up my throat. In short, I don't know anything about where the news might have gone. Sorry, Nicole! Aww. It's okay, Cecil. You're 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 cute anyway. Let's go back. I'm now gonna do mm, the station oracle. Oh gosh. You enter the storage closet where the station oracle sleeps and ask if they might know anything about the news. Bunch of numbers, they reply. You already knew that. Somehow you imagined they'd be more helpful. I'm gonna leave the oracle and go to the newsroom. Returning to the scene of the crime runs contrary to everything you've ever learned about investigative journalism, but despite Times' call for desperate manner, 
Did I just say despite times call for Jessica Mender? <laughs> Running, returning to the scene of the crime runs contrary to everything you've ever learned about investigative journalism, but desperate times call for desperate measures. The mop that once bounced on the news box has toppled over and melted into pulp. There's a hole in the wall. Nothing you can follow. Still, to have eaten through steel, the news must have been very hungry. All right. Uh, I guess I gotta ask station management, which is, uh, not what I want to do. But let's see what happens. Ooh, there's a dark purple spot. Okay. <laughs> a shadow undulates behind frosted glass as you approach the door labeled station management. Uncertainly grips you. Uncertainly over your choices in employment. Uncertainly over your choices in existence. Uncertainly over... What it is that is actually gripping you. I, uh, I can either approach the door, then tell them the news is missing, or go back examining the rest of the station. Um, this is actually a really tough choice. Because, um, if I tell them the news is missing, they may kill me. Um, I'm gonna go back examining the rest of the station, and I'm gonna go leave the station and search for clues. Woohoo! The sun is bright. You shade your eyes from the fearsome glow as you step outside the radio station. You come back to the station later to finish finding the clues, assuming you survive that long. Nifil sprawls out in front of you. It reeks of sand and blood and infinite possibilities. Your keen reporting instincts and the caustic trail the news have left narrow down your options as to where to search for clues. Not all of them will be fruitful. Most of all will be dangerous. Such is life as a reporter. You don't have a single lead. The news must have left something you could follow. I can either return to the community radio station, I can go to the Moonlight All Night Diner, the Nightville Public Library, the Desert Flower Bowling Alley and Arcade Fun Complex, or the Dog Park. Again, I'm hungry, I'm gonna go to the diner. Moonlight All Night Diner is the best place in Nightville if you wanna have a slice of invisible pie. Mm, my favorite flavor. It is also the only place in Nightville where you can buy invisible pie, so that works out well. The diner is almost empty, as it usually is after breakfast for us and before the lunch stampede. A jukebox fills the silence with that classic song. Last Christmas, you ripped out my heart. <clears throat> you found oozing splatters outside, but the staff says they saw nothing. As per regulation, there is only one other person in the diner you can ask, but he is always wrong, and you should really... Just ignore anything that Steve Carlsberg has to say. I'm going to actually check out the jukebox, because I, I want to know what tunes I can hear. Ooh, okay. It's going to be the jukebox glows with the same mint green light that illuminates the sign outside. Inside, you see several records, and several things of which there are no records. You look at the song choices to make sure that the 25 cent investment will be worth changing the music. Let's see, I can change the song to Shut Up and Dance or Else. Hmm, I really like that song. I can change it to Escalator to the Void, Please Stop Believing, and Mbop. I really like Shut Up and Dance or Else, but um, it plays on the radio for way uh, too many times in a day. And I'm a pretty big Hanson fan, so I'm going to change it to Mbop. See what happens. <laughs> I don't think that actually did anything except for change it right here, but uh, I guess I gotta talk to Steve Carlsberg, so I guess we can talk to that loser. Oh, hey there, Nicole. <laughs> oh, hey there, Nicole. Out on an errand for Cecil today? <laughs> that is my best impression you're gonna get, okay? Steve asks, even though you're obviously wearing your intern tunic. You look around the diner again. There's no one else here you can question. Thanks, Steve. You're fucking useless. Jesus Christ. Ugh. Oh, oh, actually, there's more. Okay. <laughs> Great. I have to do the um, impression again. Okay. He nods and takes a bite of invisible pie as you question him on whether or not he's seen the news. He, as you should have known, is less than helpful. Uh, sorry, but I don't really pay much attention to the news. It seems like it's all gloom and doom and doom and doom and doom nowadays. You turn, but he continues. 
I did see some kind of trail out back, though. Seems to lead towards downtown. Must be worth looking into. You thank him with more eagerness than you should for such a pouty clue. Really, intern Nicole, did you have to question him? Well, the fuck, dude. It was a, it was an option, so... Sorry. God. Get off my back. Let's get back to Nightvale. I'm now gonna go to the bowling alley. The Desert Flower Bowling Alley and Arcade Fun Complex is Nightvale's premier location for food, fun, and the miniature underground society's ready-to-wage floor on the world above. It's my favorite part. The crashing of pins echoes through the complex as many people are getting some practice in before the weekly bowling league. Lane 5, as usual, is empty. Old Woman Josie, who lives out near the car lot, is down by lane 13 along with several ringed beings that are certainly not angels. Hmm, I'm gonna... Hmm, no, hmm. Lane 5 could be dangerous. I could get into some, like, deep shit. I'm gonna go talk to an old woman. Old woman Josie is polishing a large bowling ball when you approach her. The finger holes look much too big to fit her hands, so it must belong to one of her many winged beings that surround her. Funny, you didn't know they played too. Um, I'm gonna ask the beings that are definitely not angels because they seem pretty cool. The beings look at you with their many eyes. They look around you and beneath you and through you and within you. They see all you have been, all that you are, and all that you will never be. Sorry, one of them says, wrapping up their turns with a perfect split. But we've been pretty focused on the game, the other being nods, dark yet inconvincent. You nod back. Bowling is important, and they are inconceivable, so it seems like the best course of action. Let's go ask Josie. Josie listens patiently to your questions. Has she seen anything? Yes. Anything unusual? Also yes. But it is only when you mention the news specifically that she reveals anything you purposely did not know. I don't know much about the news, but the Nightvale Daily Journal has been up in arms about some new construction downtown. The angels read me the imaginary edition last night. Somehow your mind flags this information as important, as it filters out all the hundreds of sights and sounds and smells as insignificant. You thank her for the information by choosing not to mention that angels are not real. No more questions. I'm going to go back to Night Vale. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the dog park. Ooh. <laughs> the city councilor would like to remind everyone to not go near the dog park. Dogs are not allowed in the dog park. People are not allowed in the dog park. And her Nicole is definitely not allowed in the dog park. Hmm. I mean, the sign on the fence of the dog park literally says that intern Nicole is definitely not allowed in the dog park. Hmm. That says something. Um, let's approach it. I don't even know where you're walking towards. Dark park? Pfft, there's no dog park. What's a dog park? I'm gonna keep going. High fence of the very real and very intimidating dog park crackles and pops with barely leashed electricity. You see a shadow beyond the gates. A hooded figure? Footsteps. And before you can turn... Ah, shit! A black bag slips over your head. You hear familiar sirens and then... Nothing. Mother fuck. Oh, everything's black. Fuck. Our sincerest condolence to the family and friends of intern Nicole. We take comfort in these final moments as we are allowed to speak of them before all records of Nicole striking from Nightville records in memory. They will be missed with the same vague sense of nostalgia felt towards a place that never actually existed. Shit. I fucking died. I don't know what I expected, dude. Okay, so we're gonna turn back this time because I want to keep my balls. So let's turn back. Uh, let's go to the next very um, dangerous place, the library. Woohoo! Nope, 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 nope. You know that investigative journalism involves some risky things. There are risky and then there are librarians. You look for clues elsewhere. Oh, fuck, okay. 
Um, I've looked at everything. If I go back to the radio station, let's see. Um, you know what? I'm actually, I'm going to go to station management. Or what happens if I go back to the recording booth? Would Cecil say something else? Nope, okay. Let's, alright, let's go to station management. Approach the door and tell them the news are missing. Oh, you write a note for them, a detailed yet concise report stuffed into a single yellow square. The note slides smoothly under the crack, and you wait. The door cracks open, darkness, rowling, disappointment. A chill descends your spine, one vertebrae at a time as you realize you forgot to fill the note out in triplicate. Oh shit, I don't even know what that means. Oh crap, I died again. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea, but um, apparently I did, so whatever. To the family of intern Nicole, we regret to inform you that Nicole has been lost to forces beyond our control. The only evidence of their existence left to us is the high-pitched, unending scream that now fills the hallway outside of station management's office. And though Nicole's time in community radio was short, their scream is long. They will not be forgotten. Alright, um, this video is getting pretty long. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end it here. But um, I'm definitely going to be making a second video so I can finish this game. But I really like this game. It's really, it's really cool. It helps explore the, the little town of Nightvale. And the writing is amazing. Like, it, it feels like it belongs in the, in the podcast, in the story. So I really, really like it. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching this. And, um, yeah, see you in the next video if there is one. Bye!